Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Trying to try told, try told him I'm a beast, I'm bud. What's up, gang? Welcome back to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day, and we have a special guest in the house. We have my man Bennett in the house. You know, the, when I was young coming up, I don't know if they did this to you guys in Newcastle, but they would say, my name's Bennett, and I ain't in it. Yeah. Well, my, his name is Bennett, and he is all up in it. He is the number one producer uh, from 2022 in our whole organization last year. He was hired uh, in November of 2021, and he broke our all-time record last year in in production. So welcome, Bennett, in the house, $361,000 in net AOP last year. And uh, first off, let's give people a little bit of background about you. Tell us, you know, how old are you, uh, what your upbringing was like, where you're from, all that. Yes, sir. Well, first, thank you for having me on this. But um, so I'm originally from Newcastle, PA. I went to Shenango High School, so township school in, in Newcastle. Um, my parents went to Newcastle, so they sent me to the township school, but loved it. It worked out for me. Basketball was my thing in high school. And then golf, I was a golfer too. But um, I think my upbringing. I heard you were a good basketball player too. I was all right. heard you were pretty good. Short guy. Yeah. Yeah, just like you. One time for the short people. Yeah. But um, I think sports come into this business a lot. So my upbringing was, you know, I have really good parents. So I thank them Great a lot. parents. Yeah. Great people. I had an yeah. opportunity to meet them. So they they really, it was just any, I knew whatever I did in life, I wanted to own my own business. So there's a good story behind it. Bird on the Run is, it, you know, that chicken joint? In Pittsburgh? No. So, it's his chicken place in Shadyside. Okay. I went to Chatham. So Is it good? Yeah, it's real Because we're giving them some free publicity here. Good. So real good. Okay, so it's good. Yeah. Okay, Shadyside. Yeah, and they got Chicken one the wings? Time. Yeah. Chicken tenders, chicken sandwiches, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to go down there. Yeah. I so like Shadyside. I was in contact with the owner. I wanted to open my own. I wanted to franchise something, right? Okay. But I didn't know, like. I was just trying to own my own something. Yes. I just wanted to own my, I wanted to be my own boss. I hated having, I always told my parents, I don't want a boss. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm my own boss. But with my dad got in contact with him and then we just kind of, I was in school. We were going back and forth and I, I just started working here. I was in school when I started working here, but that's kind of like. So you were in college? Yes. Okay, yep. and then I, I know some of the story, but mm -hmm. why don't you tell us how did we meet you? How did you meet us? Where did we find you? Yeah, yeah. Something about smoking a cigarette, I know yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Joey Crivelli, um, we're from the same hometown. It's crazy. We we both had a good friend who kind of referred me in, kind of got me in touch with Joey, and like a two days later, I ended up seeing Joey on the North Shore of Pittsburgh at Tequila. Tequila Cowboy. So we're down there and So Tequila Cowboys for because not all our listeners are in Pittsburgh. So you weren't seeing Joey drinking tequila. You were at Tequila Cowboys. It's a it's a like a, it's a, a bar, bar yeah. in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Okay, got you. So it's summer. It's yeah, it's like end of summer. So just got back to school. I'm there with like twenty of my friends from Newcastle, right? Just having a good time. I went out a lot three days a week, two days a week, did whatever. But we're out on that. 40% of the week. Yeah, yeah, they get on the weekends. But there's an outdoor patio, so we're we're always outside. Okay, you could smoke, drink, do whatever out there. So I see there's there's a McLaren out there, right? I, I see it early in the night. And then I end up seeing Joey. And he, I, th later, now I know the story. Joey's telling Brody, like, we got to go over there. I know a bunch of cats over there. So Joey ends up coming over there. I start talking to Joey. We start talking about the business. And then I watch Joey get into the McLaren. And I'm like, the hell? He's from Newcastle. How's he, how's he in that? But that's how. Were you smoking a cigarette? I was, yeah, yeah. You were. What do you remember? What kind of cigarette it was? It had to be a menthol. Okay. I don't. I don't. I didn't like the other ones. Okay. Menthol was what I did. See, I bet you. See, now that's. See, we don't. We shouldn't. Uh, we're not saying everybody should be smoking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't smoke cigarettes no. anymore, right? No. But just when I was drunk. Imagine 
people saying you shouldn't be smoking. So if you wasn't outside smoking that cigarette, mm-hmm. we might not be having this nope. podcast mm-hmm. with you with you right now. Yep. Glad you quit, but see that? <laughs> see that? My mom's a smoker cigarette. See that, Mom? One time for the smokers for you. <laughs> All right. So that's how. So you met Joey there. Joey got into McLaren. Mm-hmm. You said, how the hell is this cat getting into McLaren? Yeah. Was it the orange McLaren? Yeah, Brody. Yeah. Okay. And he's from Newcastle. Mm-hmm. All right. And then what happened? It was like a week later, or no, not even a week, a couple days later, Joey hit me up to come into the office. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll come. Check How it old out. were you? I was 22. 22. Okay. Yep. So he told me, come in the office. And then I, I enrolled into the course. Now, here's the thing the course took me a while. I used to play games a lot. Like, I was too busy to, I used to tell my mom I was too busy to go to work. But I've changed a lot. Just crazy. You're going to hear some crazy stuff. But um, it was just like we hit it off since then. It wasn't like it took us a while. I was talking to him. And then Joey. How long did it take you to get through the classes? Month and a half. Wow. Yeah. So we got to be patient yeah. with people. Mm-hmm. Took month you a month and a half. And a half. Yep. Okay. I was, I was in school. So you were BSing a lot. In school, yes. partying, playing games. Yep. I got Stuff a like story. that. Okay. The fingerprints. You know, we scheduled to get our fingerprints. Mm-hmm. I missed my appointment. Was hung over the next say, day. I knew you were going to say that. Eleven eight. It was eleven or noon. Dang. I was sleeping. Texted Joey. Yo, I missed my fingerprints. He's probably thinking this dude. He ain't making it. But yeah, that that's one of the good stories I got. That's why I am patient with people with the pre licensing stuff to come into work here. Because we that we help change the the folks' life. So. You had a lot of success. I want to talk about how you're, you've are you developed personally because obviously that's not how you are anymore. Mm-hmm. So how how did you transition into the, the, the business? How did you do it? What, what do you say? How were you able to transition into the business? How fast and also how fast did it take you to get good? I think I was already ready. I think I just needed something to do it for me. I was I was at the point where, I quit. I didn't play college basketball my senior year, and I think I was ready for something like this. So it was ASAP for me. As soon as I got in here, you know, you had to memorize a script. Me and Evan got the script done. Evan Pinkerton got it done in like a week or two. And then my first full month, I did 15K ALP, 15K net. So so you got good quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was December of 2021. 20, yeah. Yeah, that's what it would have been, yeah. Yep, December 21. Yep. But, yeah, it was – I had the mindset of So, your already, first month you would have made eight grand. I did, yeah, yeah. First eight, month. Grand, yep. yep. And so, how did you know Evan Pinkerton? Sports. Me and Evan hated each other. Okay. Hated each other. So, was he already here? No, it was like the same exact timing. Same time, same time exact but you didn't introduce him to the company. He was already coming. Br- yeah, yeah right, right. And you hated each other. Well, in high school. We didn't hate each other after high school. Yeah. But, like – High school sports rivals. He, w- I thought they were. He was a dirty player grabbing my shirt. I could see Pink being a dirty <laughs> player grabbing somebody's shirt too. Yeah. But they were. He was a real good athlete. What so school was, was Pink at? Union, Union. Okay. Him and Joey, same high school. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I heard Joey can make some threes. He can. Okay. I played. Against I don't know Joey if he too. can. Yeah. But he could. He, he can't no more. Okay. That's yeah. For sure. Yeah. He went all in on the business, but yeah. I know back in the day he was supposed to be a clip. Yeah. From behind the arc. He was good. Okay. So you got good quick. Why do you think you got good quick? Why do you think you caught on yeah. quick? Um, I'm a highly motivated individual. So I think, you know, I wanted to run my own business. You know, I, I was willing to bet on myself. So I think that had a lot to do with it. I had like a point to prove. And honestly, I was looking for money. Like I was money motivated when I first came in here. Like I used to gamble a lot. So like. I knew I, I had a couple people money, um, nothing crazy. Yeah, it was like five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. But um, they were like my friends. They, they, you know, what I'm saying I could have waited a year. They would have, they would have took the the hit for me. But it's just like when I seen like what you can actually make here, like I was like, this shit is it? How the hell is this real? Four four grand a week. He's twenty. So like, I had just the same experience. That, yeah, it was like. What what is actually possible? Like when I first came in, I was like I seen Braden uh, Cameron and Dimitri Pendro. 
they were GAs when I came in. And I was like, how the hell am I ever going to make it to, to one of them? Or they might have been essays even. Don't matter. They were in management. I was like, how, how do you even get there? You know what I'm saying? And then I constantly had Joey on my ass about writing business, doing this, coaching me hard, yelling, screaming, making sure I'm doing the right stuff. There's a real good story about that. When I first started, I had some business falling off. So it was late one night. I don't know what day it was, but it was like my first or second month here. We He took me in Brody's office to talk to me, and Sam Marzola was in there, right? So I, he wanted me to have good retention, good writing good business, making sure people can afford it, yelling and screaming about writing good business. The whole office was hearing it, going up to Brody's window, everything good in there. And now I look back on that, and it's just like that's what I needed. That's the coaching I need um, to be good. But I always thank him for what, it. What what did it take to break the all time record? Like what 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 is that? If somebody's listening in and they're like, "Man, I admire that. I admire you. I'd like to break the record one day." That's a huge number. Yeah. How did you go about it? What what did you do? What so, would you tell them it, it requires? What did it take? Yeah. What sacrifices? It definitely required re- required a lot. But here's the thing about it: I didn't start thinking about that until like September. Like late in the year. Yeah. Like I had no like knowledge. I was even going to like, I had a chance to break the record and what never came through my mind. Um, until the end of September, we were mapping out October and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to write 60 K in October. And then we were looking cause the second chance qualification for 2022 to go to Vegas, I finished number one out of like however many people, I was at like the first quarter. So basically for the second chance qualification for people, people that don't, that don't know what they did is they said for the first quarter of the year yeah, for our company convention, if you didn't make it last year, we have some open spots and they ran a contest yep. for it for new people mm-hmm. like yourself. Yes. Cause you couldn't have qualified. You were only here for a month. Right. Uh, or people that were here and they had a couple spots open for yep. them if they did good. Okay. So you were zoned in on making it to convention. Yeah. So that okay. was a big thing when I first started. And then I finished number one. I was like 120K net after the first quarter, um, which is January, February, March. And then I didn't really think about breaking the record. It really came to mind in October. And then I was like, well, I got to break it. I don't, I don't have a choice. I'll do anything to. Um, so I skipped two vacations. I did Brody's trip. Uh, we had a trip to... Uh, Utah that I qualified with, for. With the team. With the team. Yep. I ended up skipping that because I figured, listen, I, I always be able to go to Utah, but I might never get a chance to break the record. So I skipped that, qualified to go to Cabo, had to miss that because that was in November. So that was really crunch time, and I knew I probably could have did both. So that was our agency contest, yes. right? Yep. So both of those vacations were agency contests. The yes. one Brody ran in Utah, which I heard that place was sick. It was unbelievable. And then uh, the Cabo contest, that was also an agency yeah. contest. So you were winning those. Yeah. So so you won the trips mm-hmm. and then skipped the trips to go break the record. Bingo. Yeah. That's savage. Yeah. But it was. How much money did you make last year? $311,000. In real money. Real money. It, it came into your account. Yep. Checks, cash, and all that. All that. Crazy, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. How old? 23? 20, 23. 23 years old, bro. Just turned 23. November. Unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. More than me. You're on pace, brother. You're I on pace. keep up then. You will. Just keep the work ethic up. Yeah. Uh, key traits, man. What, what key traits would you say for people coming into our business now that you've had what do you got now? You got about a year and a half, not yeah. quite. Yeah, 14, 15 months. What what traits would you say? Little, really, just a little bit over a year. Then, so what what traits would you say have you noticed um, in people that do well yeah. in our business? Or if there's people listening and saying, "Well, I will, what would it take for me to be good? What type of person is good at, at what we do?" Yeah, um, I would. We we use those three traits all the time: hardworking, coachable, disciplined. Um, it breaks down into a lot more than just that because you have your, your day-to-day stuff, the the macro stuff, to where, like, this job really is hard. 
a lot. Like I tell all my new people, if it wasn't a little bit hard, you can't make three hundred eleven thousand at twenty three. <laughs> yeah, but it ain't that hard. That's well. I always tell my new people, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Right. Because who wouldn't like to make that money at twenty three? Right. It would be great. Everybody right. wants to. Right. But you know, I cut a lot of. I didn't really cut my friends off. I just had to distance myself. Like went out three days a week. It was more so I had the traits when I came here. It was just separating yourself. But I've always been a hard worker with sports. That's what leveled me up into this business of just grinding my ass off constantly. Um, so if they're hardworking, disciplined, coachable, you think they have a yeah, now good chance of being lying, successful. That's facts. Pretty much it. It's, you don't, I, was, I was honestly dumb in, in high school, college. Now, you graduated from college, right? Yes, yeah. And you graduated from college while you were working here, right? Yes. Didn't you already start yes. working here and then you still finished school? Yes. How did you pull that off? And you broke the record. Yeah. So whenever second semester rolled around of 20, it would be 2022, so January of 2022, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, right. I emailed all my professors. I was like, yo, I live, I live with my grandparents, right? which I don't live my grandparents, but um, I got to be virtual. I can't come in and rest, live with my grandparents. So I got them. I was like the only one on Zoom, right? And I'm already I'm already sitting there knowing, like, this is risky. For three years of college, three and a half years of college down, and my mom was on my ass about oh, it. Oh, I can imagine. Like, <laughs> you better graduate this and that. And I'm like, I got it. Don't worry. I can't miss out on not being at work, especially in March of last year during March Madness. March Madness. I was I would be in class making phone calls. Like, Brody would run meetings. How much money do you think you made in March? March uh, 22, I made like 35 grand. 30, while you were in college. Grand. While I was in college. 35 grand while you were in college yeah. more than the professors. That's stuff they rap about. That's what – it was tough sitting there listening to a professor – knowing how much money I was making, being humble about it. And just, just I, I honestly graduated from my parents. I do admire that about you. I'm glad you graduated. You came that yeah. far. You got to finish. Mm -hmm. But I do admire that about you, man. And, and uh, a lot of people that would have that level of success, you know, at 23 years old, you give somebody $311,000. You know, there was a, a quote. I forget who it was, was by. I'm, I don't want to misquote who it was from. It might have been Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I might have been quoting it from somebody else, but I do know the quote was nearly all men can handle some type of adversity, but if you really want to test a man's character, give him success. And for you to have that level of success at 23 years old, 300 and some thousand dollars and, and nobody in our office would, would, uh, describe you as cocky or arrogant, man. Everybody would, would mm -hmm. say the exact opposite. Yeah. You know, I think you're a great, great young man and a great uh, role model for people to, to look up to. And if I didn't know anything about you, you know, I would say, man, whoever raised you or put, you know, time into you, whether it was grandparents or parents, somebody did a really good job, yep. you know, with you. Um, I think you exemplify everything that we would want somebody to, look up to in a young person, you know, starting here, um, other than a couple of days a week where I get you to make sure you ain't late to the gym. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yeah. you, you're, you're the perfect example of, of, of success, humility, uh, mind, body, spirit, taking care of yourself, being a good friend, being a good son, yep. uh, everything that we would want. And you got recently got promoted, mm -hmm. uh, to being, to being an MGA. Yes, when, when, when people get scared of doing this, mm -hmm. you know, there has to be a little, Fear. I don't know if you ever had that, you know, fear coming in at all or nervousness, yeah. but a lot of people have that fear or nervousness because you get paid on your performance, you know, how well that you do. Yeah. Um, did you ever have that fear or, or how do you think other people can get through that yeah. fear? I, I never did. No. Um, I was just like, I'm hopping in here and I'm, I'm going to make as much money as I possibly can. That's the mindset I had. I didn't, I didn't know what it was, how to do it. I was just like, I'm going to go do it. I didn't think about nothing. Just full for, full force, straight face, straight ahead. Nothing was bothering me. All in. But, like, 
that's how sports was for me. Like, I really, during COVID, I was dribbling in my basement. Like, there was nowhere to go. Couldn't go to a gym. I was dribbling in my basement. Yeah. You know, sliding. There was dust down there. You know, I had a big basement, but still, like, I couldn't shoot. Just making sure I was dribbling, keeping up on my skills. But, yeah, pretty much. What do you think other people could do that have that fear of, yeah. like, man, I, I want to do it, but was, I'm nervous about, you know, betting on myself a little bit? Yeah. I would say the thing to really be worried about is is working a nine to five until you're sixty five. That's something you should really worry about because a hundred thousand dollars isn't a lot of money anymore for a family with kids, husband, wife, like you you can struggle throughout your lifetime if you don't use your money in the right places. Um I was fortunate enough to have parents who were good with their money and put it back into me and my brother a lot. So very fortunate um, and blessed. You know, we were spoiled as kids. I'll say I'm not scared to say I was spoiled, but that's what you should really be scared about is letting your future family down. Like, Well, if you were spoiled, how'd you get the work ethic? That's a good question. Because you got a great work ethic. Yeah, yeah. So where'd it come from? Probably my, my mom. Now, my dad's a great worker too, but my mom's a hustler. She's 50, 58 right now. She runs a bakery. Okay. Two fat guys in an oven in Newcastle. Okay. It's called. But, Can you um, take me one day? Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Okay. But um, Let's get it on the schedule. Yeah. I want you to take that. me. Yeah. All right, I'll save up a cheat day for that. Yeah. I'll do legs that day. Oh, that's good. We ju- She just moved into a bigger place um, about a, two months ago. Two fat guys. In an oven. In an oven. Yep. And who are the fat guys? So it's... I think the original owners are from Boardman or Youngstown. Okay. Somewhere in Ohio. Were they fat? I think so. I don't okay. Know but that was a while ago. And then they, they might have lost some weight now. <laughs> yeah. And they sold it. And so then, there's no fat, two fat guys. Not right there right now? Just the oven. Just the oven, I guess. Just me and you walking in the <laughs> yeah. door. Two going to be fat eating yeah. all the. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I think I the, like name's, it. the name's the best part. I like it. But a my lot. My mom. Her work, she, I mean, she was a nurse for 30 years. Okay. So an RN, she retired and opened the bakery. I mean, she works more now than ever, and she's 58 years old. Yeah. You know, how are you going to let my mom outwork you? Right. She The other day. When you say she works more than ever, like what? What do you mean? Hours. Just, she was there the other day. How many she hours? Texted me. Yeah, she, the other day she texted me. It was like 8 at night. Don't call me. I'll be sleeping. Got to get up at 4. Up at four. She got to make the bread. Out grinding the out young grind. grinders. Yeah. I like it. She's out grinding. She got to make the bread, literally. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Literally and physically. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, because that, that bakery, the you got to start the bread at four. So your your work ethic came from watching your mom yeah, hustle and, and a lot from your mom? My mom and dad being able to provide for us. Um, we play travel baseball. No, that, that stuff ain't, ain't cheap. Yep. Very expensive. Yep. Um. And they weren't, we weren't rich by any means. So I think from both of them. What do you think other people could do to get over their fear of yeah. coming into the deal? I would say bet on yourself. That's the biggest thing you can okay. do in your life. It, bet it, on yourself. At some point in your life, you're going to have to do it. Got to do it. At some point. What things did you have to stop doing? You know, you mentioned like, you know, there were some people I had to distance myself. Yeah. You know, I, I always tell you know, I tell people, you know, what I notice is you're going to outgrow people when you start doing what's best for you. Mm-hmm. You'll outgrow people when you start doing what's best for you. What did you have to stop doing? What types of things did you have to give up that way in yeah. order to be successful? So there's there's just one thing I've seen on Instagram. It's like when a rocket goes up, they got to drop stuff because it gets to the altitude where it, they got to drop that stuff. So that's one of my favorite things of, like, the things I stopped doing, I mean, I stopped going out. Like, I shut shit off completely. Like, menthols, gave up the menthols. Yeah. All I right. didn't smoke that much. It was yeah. just when I was drunk. You drank a little bit. Yeah. All right. But um, I, I cut it off completely. It wasn't like a slow play. Like, it was completely off. My friend, like, nothing against my friends, but they're like, you're you're different. You're changing. I'm like, yeah, for the better. You know what I'm saying? Um, But it was like. I think a lot of people struggle with that. Oh, yeah. You know, young people coming up hearing that you're changing. I, had, I think people struggle with hearing that you're changing yep. or you've changed. Yep. 
And I think people have to get comfortable with the fact of, of hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and embrace. I have changed. Yeah. I, that's the point of it all. We're supposed to change. We're supposed to grow. Yeah. I have to change. Yes. Okay. So that Joey helped me through that all. Okay. uh, A lot, but like, I didn't really lose any friends. You know, I still have friends where I'll hit up. It's just like we left off. Right. No, no no faking, no, none of that. But, you know, some fall off. It's just dis- distancing yourself. That's life, you know. I don't hate anyone. I'll never hate anyone, but that's just. So you basically just gave up partying, going out, yeah, sports, drinking and smoking. Sports. I I used to golf every day in the summer. Golf. Gave up I, the golf. I golfed one time last year. Okay. I love golf. Yep. Gambling and golf. Loved it. If I could do that for the rest of my life and we didn't have to make money for nothing or help other people, I would golf every day. But I that gave up it all. I, I came to work every day with my head down, ready to build a business and ready to help other people and train and develop them. Love it. That, that was my mindset. Love it. So I think you, you got your wish, you know, of, of uh, opening up a business because oh, you, yeah. you, you do own your own business. Here. Dream that's, come true. that's what you do. Yeah. And uh, there's no renewals on wings. Nope. Residuals. Yeah. Right. You just you need a couple people to come in there and eat them chicken mm-hmm. wings over and over again. Yeah. But this, you, you continue to get residual income mm-hmm. off of all that business you wrote. Yeah. You're going to keep getting paid on it now yeah. this year over uh-huh. and over and over and over and over again. Did you get any good renewal checks yet? This month it was 5200 Excuse me? 5200 $5,200. In January, yeah. Last week. We got After it. one year. Yep. 13 months of work. Mm-hmm. $5,000 in residual mm-hmm. income, yep. which is paid off of work that you've already done because people are making their payments every month without working. So basically, if you wrote no business None. for the whole month, yep. you would have got paid $5,200. And then There's your salary for betting was, on yourself. That was the week. My biggest paycheck ever was last week. I made 100 bucks under 20 grand. So $20,000 last week. Yep. 24 years old. 23. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm jealous. You tried to give me a year. $20,000 <laughs> at 23 years old, bro. Now we need 23,000 in a week for 20. Yeah. And I got a feeling you're going to do it this up, this upcoming oh, yeah. week yeah. to close out. What, what advice do you have for other young people in general that are listening? You know, not everybody's in our business that listens, we have a broad audience. So yeah. young, young folks out there looking for success, looking mm-hmm. for greatness, what advice would you give? Yeah. Young, old, it don't matter. I think I keep saying it, bet on yourself, like be the change. You got, you have to change something to get something. So you have to give up to, to grow up. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Give so up to go up, to give up to go, up. give up to go up, grow yeah. up to grow go up. up. Yeah. You got to do all of it. You got to get up to go up. Yeah. But I think, Changing your lifestyle, mind, body, spirit, I'm big on. Eating food, you should think of it as it's fueling your body, not because you like it. Like, just if you start to think like that, I feel like everything in your life to change. Like, everything you do is for (coughs) a specific reason. You know, not just like we eat to to get, you know, fill our body. We fuel our body, not just because we're hungry. We drive to get to work to go make money. We don't just drive to work to go sit there. Like if you start thinking small like that, um, what's the purpose of everything that I'm doing? That's going to better me. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And just changing. There's always room for change. Not even big change, like fixing small stuff, getting up earlier, going to the gym. Um, that's something I need. What do you mean mind, body and spirit? So your mind, what I mean by that is like developing your mind, making sure you're reading, um, your body, <coughs> the gym, making sure you're eating healthy, and then spirit, God, whatever you believe in. No, nobody judges here, but that's one thing you know we're all big on: um, developing yourself, developing other people, pouring what you learn into other people. So stuff like that. Throw you a curveball before we get out. What what uh what things what what n- maybe negative connotations or things that people confuse that you want to debunk about? what it is that you do yeah. or what it is that we do. So I would say the biggest thing is like this, a pyramid scheme. A lot of people come up with that here. Here's the good thing. I always explain it like this in a pyramid scheme. You can't make more money than a person above you. Right? So now I, this is nothing against Dimitri Pendro, but yeah. 
last year, I made more money than him every single week, and he was my manager. There was even weeks I made more than Joey. But, like, when I made twenty grand last week, I made more than Joey. He's an RGA in the, in the business. Like, that's pretty much top of the line, you know, management. But yeah. um, I would say that they can't get it confused with that because that just hurts people. That This – this opportunity and what goes on here. Listen, ask my man Brian Herbie. He's thirty. There ain't no. He'll he'll tell you straight to your face. There's no better place. He's done sales, but just hearing it from him because he's been in been in the field of sales. Like he's seen what it is, and I agree with him. There ain't no better place. I haven't even been anywhere else. But me neither. Yeah, me neither. I but I've, I've I've looked around over over the seventeen years, yeah. man, and and. Uh, this is it. Mm-hmm. We got married. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Say I do. Stay yep. stay loyal and faithful. I, I remember uh, my mentor uh, in the beginning, you know, Marcus telling me, you know, when I was, I'm like, man, is this too good to be true? You know, is everything? Oh, and stuff. he's like, man, he's like, look, if you're everything that you tell me that you are mm-hmm. and you're willing to do what you say you're willing to do, hard work and coach ball, that stuff, mm-hmm. he said, this will be everything that I tell you that it is, and then some. Yeah. What you're experiencing is the and then some. I got a funny story real quick. When I came in here, my mom and dad, right, I was going to have a college degree. My mom was telling my dad, because my dad sold insurance in, like, the 80s, I think, when they, they went to collect the check, the premium. You had Ooh. to go collect the premium. Yes. He did it for, like, a month. She was like, what the hell is he doing selling insurance? That's not, you got to do something about him crying and stuff. Crying. Yeah. And <laughs> the next month, I'm making four, two, three, four K a week. And that, that's what it was, you know. But yes. that's the funny story. Like, People they were actually think worried. that. They were worried. Yes. Yeah. They think Everybody's it's like the parents are like that. old school, con- like yep. insurance. Mm-hmm. We got, we play ping pong and uh, cornhole. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not, you know, that that's one, you know, people, oh, that's not a professional. Mm -hmm. It's super professional, but, but we, but we like to have fun. You know, people, if you look at the hours, people go to work. Sometimes they're more, they work, they're more at the office than they are at their own house. So you don't want it to be miserable. So we try to make it a fun, comfortable atmosphere and environment. There's nothing in there. There's a bed. Trap house. Yeah. Out here getting it. <laughs> There's a bed. Save all that money. Don't be gambling all that money oh, now. No, I don't all right. Gamble. All right. Yes, sir. Proud of you. You already gambled on yourself. Yes, sir. And you won. Yeah. Right? Keep Big keep time. betting on yourself. So hey, Bennett, thank you for uh Absolutely. thank you for being a role model, man, for, for so many people in, in the in the organization. You know, my mentor and like a father to me, you know, Jim Tressel, mm-hmm. you know, he always used to tell me about when he when his teams got special, he said if if your superstars on the team work hard and they become good role models for people, you got a chance to be special because those are the people that, that people end up looking up to. And so I think we're we're uh, our culture is a beneficiary of people like you mm-hmm. that give our people something to strive towards being like because of the example that you lead with not only your work ethic but the way that you carry yourself. You know, also there could be worse young people, you know, that are out there making the money that you're making that they could be looking up to. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Not everybody has the opportunity to coach people like that and partner with people like that and work with people like that and help to build a business like that together. So all I know is I'm grateful for you and I'm going to be even more grateful when you take me to two fat man in the oven. So we're going to get it on. We're going to yeah. get it on the books. Yeah. All right. We will. Appreciate you, thank man. You. Hey, thank you guys uh, for joining us. If, if you know anybody that this can help, please uh, share the grind cast, share the word. We're here to inspire and, and help people. Thank you, Bennett. Thank you all for joining us on another episode of the grind cast. Get ready. It's a new day. Yeah.